Now, even though she's only 16 years of age, my next guest has already achieved in a few short years what most people could only dream of doing in a lifetime. She has starred opposite such Hollywood names as Michelle Pfeiffer, Kieran Knightley, Kate Blanchett, and indeed Bill Murray. She has been nominated for a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and an Oscar. But it clearly runs in the family because her dad is an actor too. So would you welcome them both, please, Saoirse Ronan and her father, Paul, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You were, you were on my first Late Late Show, weren't you? I know, yeah. Here we are, 17,000 years later. Mm, it's been a while now. How are you since we last met? How's it all been going? It's been going well, yeah. I've been busy. Yeah. I've been busy, I've been away. Um, but it's all been fantastic. And I can't believe it's been a year since we were here. A lot has yeah. happened it's since then. Like. Yeah, it is yeah, yeah, eight months it's or so. Yeah, it's just over a year. Yeah. It's been an extraordinary time at every level. We'll talk about all that in a second. But in many ways, Paul, as, as the dad in the, in the equation here, you're, you're responsible for Saoirse being, uh, A, an actress, at, uh, and she's responsible for being a fab actress, but well, you kind of started it all in some ways, didn't you? Well, yeah, there's a few people involved, I mean, along the, the road that led to Saoirse being an actress, and I think um, from an early age, from the, about the age of two, I spotted something in her that, no, I wasn't trying to make an actress of her then, you know, but I, I, um, I realised she was a special kid. She was very imaginative and very... Uh, friendly and sociable and, and, you know, more so than any kid I'd ever seen. And as she grew up and stuff, and I was acting, she was on the sets, well, a lot of sets with me, and she, she would be on the sets. And she grew up around yeah. actors and, and, and you know, theatre actors and friends of ours would stay with us in New York. And, and um, eventually when she was, I think it was, what were you, seven or eight when we did the, the short film? Mm. Um, I put her in a short film I was doing. Around that. They needed a kid. And I said, well, I've got one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she did that. Got one handy. I've got one handy, yeah. <laughs> Hanging around the house. Hang on a second. You're <laughs> not doing that. You got one. Yeah. <laughs> She's seven. Got one. It's about time she went to work, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Get out there and make, Old a, school make there, a few yeah. bob for yourself. <laughs> and, of um, course, you ended up in the clinic together, didn't you? You were very young. I mean, do you recall? You were only seven. Yeah. So do you remember filming that and everything? And, or yeah, I do. I do. I remember my first day. And I was about maybe eight at the time. And I was very nervous. Yeah. And I didn't know anyone. And I'd, I, I don't know where we were shooting, but uh, it was, you know, an RT drama and everyone was busy doing their thing. And um, it was my first, I mean, it was a different experience yeah, to me being on a film set with Dad. Yeah, it was first professional job. Like, I mean, yeah. it was just you know. like, you know, I mean, it, this you were particular in the short I was doing. I wasn't you in, were the in the You were in the second season that they did. In the clinic. So you shared a scene, ultimately, which we were going to show Well, the first season, yeah, but you see, the reason they w we, we shared that was because, I mean, in the scene, she has to be, you know, knocked down by a car or almost knocked down or she'll run in front of a car and the car stops and yeah. she falls. So, well, we were a bit nervous about that. And even though I knew all the stunt guys and everything, I, I was still a bit nervous. So they put me driving the car. And so I had to jump out and pretend to be the stranger who was yeah. afraid to be... Well, you know, you know, so I was glad to be around drama. when she was doing her first scene. It was great. It was a great honour. It was exciting, wasn't it? It was exciting, it was good, yeah. yeah. Was, can you remember that? We film? loved it. I, yeah, You can remember course. this? Yeah. What she a, was brilliant. What a strange first scene to have together. I know. Oh, yeah, nearly killing your little girl. Oh, that's strange. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, quite, well, let's have a look at it, just okay. to remind ourselves. Yeah. Look at the, you're just so little in there. Oh. What is it? Kid. Kid ran out. Oh, God, are you OK? Don't move, don't move. Just stay where you are. Brianna, are you OK? She's she just appeared from I'm nowhere. I'm a doctor. Just let me look around. Yeah, she, I, I'm trying to know. She ran out between the cars. Let me check cars. her out. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Rhiannon, it's OK. Everyone just got a big fright. The car didn't even hit her. Oh, for God's sake, Rhiannon. Please stay, kid. Don't go away again. Please. Oh. oh. Delicious. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, good. Look at the little team. I've got the squeakiest voice. Wow. I didn't realise. Oh, my That's gosh. That's because you were seven. Of course you had the squeaky voice. Oh. A completely different person. Were you? Yeah. Because yeah. you were seven. Because that, yeah, it was ages ago. Yeah. You're <laughs> yeah. 16 now. Yeah. Mm. Eight, nine years is an age. It's depressing. Um, <laughs> but you, then, of course, you, you got used to hanging around the sets, didn't you? And, and uh, yeah. the camera as an actress. So it became kind of second nature for you. And when you're, mm. even now, and in the last few years, when you've, your star has risen and to such lofty you know, heights and so on, did you 
uh, agree that it was all family on tour, yourself and, and your mum and your dad, like all heading off together. Was that the was that the agreement to make it all safe and sound? Yeah. I think well, it we was had just to. inevitable, wasn't it? it was yeah, we had to. I mean, Saoirse was was a child, and we had to uh, we had to take care of her. We're yeah. her parents, and she's her own, her only child. So we we you know we had to um, to be there for her, and we weren't you know we had no security for her. I mean, it was, so we kind of filled in the jobs. Monica um, is was always she had to have a chaperone anyway. So mm. so yeah. Monica actually worked as the chaperone, was paid as a chaperone, you know. But an um, alternative chaperone though was was never was the not an issue because us. who who could yeah. replace your mom and dad? Like yeah. you know, as, as someone especially someone that age, that how could you look after someone? How, nobody would take care of you as much as your mom and dad. Like so. Paul, is is she? Um, just you can just talk among yourself for okay. a second, Sarah. <laughs> Paul, is she demanding? Is she is she difficult oh. on occasions? Live oh. TV, Dad. Well, <laughs> Sir, I asked you just to keep to yourself for a minute. Sorry. Crisps, and although Monica takes care of that, she has to have her own tea bags brought with her everywhere. Okay, and if Diva, anyone Diva, in this Diva. audience went somewhere else, they would bring Barry's tea bags with them. Is that, yeah. Wouldn't you? Or, or, or lines is, or lines is. Or lines is, or, lines or Tato crisps. Yeah. No okay. walkers. No walkers. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a very nationalist feel to the well, program. Tonight, I, I remember it? the last time I was on the show, yes. and there was this big like controversy after I said um, that I preferred walkers. Yeah, but you don't <laughs> anymore. I don't anymore. Yeah, no. you're, you're, you're yeah. Done. definitely. So what what keeps you grounded? I mean, look, you're you're moving in these circles. I mentioned the actors and actresses that you've you've been starring with, and and it's it's their pleasure. You're at the stage now where it's their privilege to act with you now. So that's kind of changing, yeah. which is lovely and well deserved, incidentally. Um, what what keeps you grounded? You should be, of course, slightly bonkers and, and demanding, but you're none of the above. Tea bags. Tea bags <laughs> and, and crisps. And tiredness. Um. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's so tired after... I mean, we just got back from a tour, a publicity tour for, for uh, her new film, and uh, it's so tiring going to... I mean, you know, it sounds great. You know, you're going to London and Paris and Madrid and premieres and paparazzi snapping photographs and... It's, it's, all it's very strange. But, you know, when you get sense? home, it's like... Whew, well, it's, I mean, the whole thing is, when it's a press tour, it's exciting. It's very exciting because you're getting a chance, you're getting opportunities to go to all these different places that I probably, at my age, I wouldn't get to go to. Mm. Um, but it's a very sort of unnatural thing to have people taking your photograph and posing for, like, 50 photographers at one point. Yeah. You know, it's it's strange. It's so, great, and there's there's a good adrenaline and energy when you're on a red carpet with people that you enjoy being with and things like that. When I'm with cast members and things, it's fine. But yeah, it, it is kind of weird to get and, your head around it. And, and yeah, wonder what was all that? Especially when you get back to the hotel, I presume, and you're watching a film or something. Go, <laughs> actually, it's all there. Yeah, yeah. I think oh. you just have to forget about it. I just leave it behind. The Oscar nomination was, I think, it was a very proud moment for a lot of us watching who were who fans and like myself. And oh, do you remember when when the nominations came through, Paul, the proud dad? Because it was, of course, oh, yeah. middle of the night at that oh, stage. It was I you remember. that stayed up. Yeah, I used to, we were in New Zealand, yeah. and uh, we were in the the house we were staying in, and I knew that things were coming through, but I couldn't I couldn't possibly go to sleep. There was maybe you know two, three, four hours or whatever before they were going to be announced. And uh, I was waiting by the phone, by the mobile phone, the phone in the house and everything. Just, you know, somebody was going to call me first, the agent, uh, our agent in, in uh, California, in, in L.A., or um, somebody who saw it on the telly or whatever, you know. And uh, the agent called and um, told, us, told me that she's got the nomination, uh, which I fully expected. Yeah, of, of course. course. You know what I mean? So your dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. And... Um, she uh, and I just I think you were up in bed and I your mum was in bed mm -hmm. and and uh, I, I think you just heard me screaming and jumping up yeah. and down and making weird sounds and whistling and all sorts of things and yeah, banging well, walls and I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> just knocking the house down. Well, I remember being up in the bedroom because we were in New Zealand and I was work I was working on the lovely bombs yes. at the time, so I was getting up, I was preparing myself for work the next day by getting my rest and um, and suddenly. I just woke up maybe a few minutes beforehand and then I heard the phone ring and I thought, I wonder... Is that the call? Is that good news, bad news? What is it? Do they ring you even if you don't get a nomination? What happens? And then Dad started screaming and jumping around <laughs> and so we went downstairs and 
and, uh, and so it began. There I mean, was, pass out. <laughs> what a great moment for you, it must have been... Yeah, like, oh yeah, I mean, <clears throat> uh, the phone calls that were made then back to Ireland, back to the family and friends and everything, it didn't matter what time of the day it was over here or over there, it, you know, we were just so, so delighted and so proud and, and you know, a, I mean, we, we spoke the last time about, as well about the film you were making then, which is now out, which is the way back. Um, yes. And it's Colin Farrell and yourself and Ed Harris. Mm -hmm. I mean, brilliant. Uh, all, all three of you are excellent in it as well, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's. Did you enjoy working with Colin, by the way? Just remind us of. I, I really. Did he really look after you? Di he did. Sure. Yes, he did. Colin is. Um, I'm sure you've met him. He's a, yeah, he's a, he's a really lovely yeah. guy, and he's very grounded. And Dad has worked with him as well. Sure. And he's. Um, he's just a very lovely person to be around. He's kind of infectious. His, his energy and everything. And actually, when we went to Morocco, which he wasn't going to be shooting in, um, he had been there before, and he knew that the food wasn't. Great. Very similar to ours at all. It's all lamb there. It's all tagine. It's all lamb. And he sent me over this box that has tea bags and chocolates and crisps, tato crisps, and all these <laughs> beautiful Irish foods. Well done. You're really getting beautiful. a hang of me at Yeah, yeah. Good. And that yeah. was his package that he was able to send it over. It was, and he sent that stuff. to me when I was in Morocco, and That's and it just made my year to have that because. The, the film that you're in, by the way, that you're talking about, it, it looks grueling. It looked like a grueling film to me because it's, it's these guys, a bunch of prisoners who escaped from, the, from what looks like a gulag in Siberia, and you're making yeah. your way across, whether it's intense heat or intense cold. and it, it looked heavy going. I wonder, was the shoot tough going for you, or was it, did they make it very easy? Was the light no, they didn't the make Hollywood it very thing? easy. The, no, no, it no. wasn't a Hollywood movie yeah, easy. set at all. Okay. Um, it was tough, but it was fantastic, and I think... Ultimately, the struggle that all the cast went through in the desert and in Bulgaria and up in the mountains and all these different things, it actually ended up benefiting our performance quite a bit. Um, Let's have a little look at it. Okay. Okay. You're crossing the ice here. Yeah. It's good. No, it won't take our weight. We'll have to swim across. Can you swim? Yes, mister. You wouldn't lie to me. I'm not lying, comrade. And don't call me comrade. Followed you afterwards. So it's, you're back from um, you have another couple of movies coming out soon. I mean, it's just you're on the merry-go-round all the time, aren't you? How's how's your fan base mm. coming along? Are you getting lots of fan mail now? Is it all? Uh, um, yeah, I've I've gotten a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul. Mo <laughs> yeah. Well, she gets yeah she gets fan mail from you know you get nice little le letters from little girls that want you know little boys or young young people that want uh, photographs and stuff like that and then you get letters from fifty year old, year old men. fifty year old elfless and uh, what do they weird. want? I don't know what they want. I know what I'd like to give them. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few. There's a few. Do you have a boyfriend? She's marrying her Ryan. daddy. I've been telling her Come that since now. the age of two. Do you really think I'm going to say that on national TV? Yes. No. <laughs> no, you're not going to tell me or no, you don't have one? <laughs> Tumbleweed. I think you've just answered my question, sir. Look at that, that. This is a brilliant dynamic yeah, yeah, here. Dad, dad, yeah. dad boy. Next you're question. sitting there like this going, does oh, she boy. have one? <laughs> <laughs> so next question is, when, yes, obviously this, this movie's out on St. Stephen's Day in Ireland, the way back. It is, 26th of December. Mm -hmm. And where are you mm -hmm. off to? So Christmas is home? Carlo? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to mm -hmm. be at home for Christmas and we're going to get up in the morning. Still very early. I still get up very early. Yeah, yeah. even though um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you're waiting for Santa to come and of yeah. course. see if he delivers Santa. a present. I'm very on the tree. excited. Yeah. I don't know what I'm getting, so. I know what I'm getting. I've written my letter. What are you getting? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Why not? Because it's a surprise from Santa. But we can know, surely? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll trade you. Okay. Tell me about the boyfriend. That's <laughs> <on that side. laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, thanks for coming. Happy Christmas to you and your families. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know I'm a great fan of yours, yeah. and Paul, appreciate you bringing her in. You've got your work cut out for, for the next 10 oh, years, I think. Well, so good yeah, luck with that. good work, though. Sirius and Paul Rowan, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Paul. There's one other thing. We're, we're doing um, 
Uh, Saoirse is doing a, a book signing tomorrow oh, in Brown Thomas for the uh, the book that... Um, Barry that was McCall. The Barry McCall. Oh, the photos, yeah. 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 And it's for the ISPCC and Saoirse is now an ambassador for the ISPCC and we're doing that be tomorrow between 3 and 5. So, so if you want to go in and meet Saoirse and get the book signed, it's a great cause. It's a great book. Great money to a great Excellent. cause. Excellent. Good work. Thanks for that, Bob. Lovely to see you both. Thanks a million.